Hello and welcome. For today's video, we have left behind frigid Shanghai for the much warmer climes of Guangzhou. But we're not here for the weather. We're here for this, the Xpeng P7. Now, a lot of viewers have requested this car over the last few months, and we're very excited to be bringing you a full review, including a glimpse at the latest version of Xpilot 3.0. That is Xpeng's semi-autonomous driving system, which will be competing directly with Tesla's autopilot here in China. Let's get started. First, a quick primer on Xpeng. Founded in 2015, it is one of the many new electric car brands trying to make the most of China's push towards new energy vehicles, and one of the few to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It's also one of the few who has actually managed to produce and sell a car. In fact, they managed to produce two different cars, First, the G3 Compact SUV, which launched in 2018, then the P7 sedan, which launched in April of last year. Together, they've sold almost 30,000 vehicles so far. The face of the Xpeng P7 is one that I wasn't wild about at first, but it's certainly grown on me over time. It's futuristic, aggressive. This is due in large part to this signature strip of LEDs here up top, which are over the almost imperceptible headlights. This is an increasingly common look here in the Chinese market, but it's one that's just as commonly bungled, looking awkward or cheap. Thankfully, that's not the case with the P7. Xpeng is very open about the fact that they took inspiration from Star Wars lightsabers during the design process. I think that's pretty cool. The only thing they could make it better is if you could change the color of the light. I would make mine purple, like Mace Windu's. The design team behind the P7 clearly had something against sharp lines and creases, because there are almost none to be found on this vehicle. It's like a river stone worn smooth by years of tumbling, or maybe a sand dune that's been shaped by the wind. Even the roof line makes a smooth, fast back transition to the rear end. These smooth shapes are a necessity in electric vehicles, where aerodynamic drag is the mortal foe of range, and the smooth lines give the P7 a drag coefficient of 0.236. Thankfully, we humans tend to appreciate forms that seem to have been shaped by nature, and the P7 is no exception. The stacked look on the front end is echoed here on the rear, with another lightsaber-looking LED strip over top two separate lighting elements. These rear light will probably not get as much attention as the front, but in looking at it, I found that one of my favorite details on the car was the way that it terminated here on the body panel on the side. It's a small thing, but it's just something that kept catching my attention. As a hatchback lover, I was really hoping that the P7 would have a hatchback-style rear opening to go with this sloping roofline, but instead it has a traditional trunk opening. Still, it offers decent space at about 440 liters, and whatever you can't put here, you can put up front in the frunk. In terms of interior styling and layout, I think the P7 falls somewhere between the Tesla Model 3 and its most directed domestic competitor, the BYD Han, which we reviewed last year. You may recall from that review, the BYD Han has a remarkably traditional interior design with a few modern touches. That means a traditional instrument binnacle here, but with an LCD screen inside, as well as quilted leather seats. The Tesla Model 3, on the other hand, takes all conventions of interior design, crams them all together, and puts them on a big screen in the middle. Well, the P7 retains the big screen, in fact, it measures the same 15 inches as the one in the Tesla Model 3, but it also keeps a 10.25 inch instrument cluster. The interior design language is elegant and simple. Touches like the brushed aluminum door handles and small speakers that pop up when the car is turned on give it a very premium feel. Material quality isn't quite to the same standards as some luxury marks, but it's more than acceptable for a car that ranges from $33,000 to $55,000. The front seat of the P7 is among the most comfortable I've sat in for quite some time, both soft and supportive. Those pop-up speakers I mentioned before are part of the optional Dynaudio package, and also come with speakers built into the headrests. It's the closest thing to a surround sound system I've ever experienced in a car, and it's quite enjoyable. The rear seats, however, were less comfortable. There was plenty of legroom, but the floor is quite high, and the bottom cushions are just a bit too short for long rides. The P7 makes good use of its massive screen by coming with tons of features. China remains the king of e-commerce, and that's on full display here in the P7. The Xmart OS offers a huge app market that supports a wide variety of popular apps, everything from news and entertainment to grocery shopping and vehicle maintenance. 
For those of you who don't want to mess with the screen, Xpeng released an update to the Xmart OS late last year with what they called the first all voice in car system. This thing can execute 10 voice commands about every 25 seconds. Ni hao xiao pi. Hey. Kai chuo chuang. Hao, zhu jia chuo chuang zheng zai da kai. Wo yu dian as you can tell, the system is currently only available in Chinese, but Xpeng did debut an English version of their UI when the G3 went on sale in Norway. There are three versions of the P7, all of which are built on its Smart Electric Platform Architecture, or SIPA. Despite its name, the long-range model is essentially the base standard range version, with a rear-mounted electric motor producing 263 horsepower and 287 pound-feet of torque. The super long-range model keeps the same rear-mounted motor, but upgrades the liquid-cooled ternary lithium battery pack from 70.8 kilowatt hours to 80.9. The increased size, combined with decreased weight and some aerodynamic modifications, means claimed NEDC range jumps from 586 kilometers to 706 kilometers. Super indeed. The all-wheel drive high-performance model is the flagship, at least in terms of speed, and adds another 161 horsepower front-mounted motor. The official 0 to 100 km per hour time for the single motor model is 6.7 seconds, while the dual motor high performance model will do it in 4.3. I'm currently driving a super long range version of the P7. It, it's definitely the one that I spent the most time in over the past couple of days. Now, the official 0 to 100 km per hour time of 6.7 seconds is more than adequate, trust me. Acceleration is brisk, even at highway speeds, with the signature instant thrust of an electric vehicle. I spent a decent amount of time in the performance version as well, and while I didn't get to throw it around a track or anything like that, I would say that the difference is just as noticeable as you would expect. Adding a second motor up front means that brisk acceleration becomes the type of acceleration where you need to stow any loose items before going flat to the floor. All of my time driving the P7 over the last couple days has been on surface streets and highways, so I won't be able to speak to the performance or handling limits of any of the different versions. I will say, however, that they are all more comfortable than a Tesla Model 3, especially over bumps and imperfections in the road. Now, this is due, I'm sure, to softer suspension tuning, as well as an extra 10 centimeters or so of wheelbase. I will say that I wish that the regenerative braking was a bit more aggressive, even in its highest setting, I found that one pedal driving was a bit of a challenge. The cabin is also quieter, which is incredibly important in an electric vehicle. Electric cars make great commuters, because the lack of engine NVH does wonders for making the cabin a more relaxing place to pass time, provided the vehicle is properly insulated, that is. So now we're going to experience what I think is the most interesting and important part of this car and probably this video, and that would be Xpeng's NGP, or Navigation Guided Pilot. That's the name for their semi-autonomous driving system. Basically, here's how it works. You start by putting in a destination into the GPS, either with your uh, touch controls or with your voice. It only has Chinese right now, so I'm going to do it in Chinese. Ni hao xiao pi. Uh, now I select my route. Okay, so as we set off here, I am completely in control. The NGP navigation guided pilot has not started yet. It will begin uh, we'll offer the option of starting NGP once we reach a point at which the system has a uh, high-resolution map. So what this system does is it relies 
on a combination of high resolution mapping and uh, sensors, both ultrasonic and uh, radar, wave radar and 14 different cameras, all these different things. And it puts them all together. So once we reach a point on the route in which the system feels it can take over, it will then prompt me to do so. Okay. When I've reached this point, it's going to give me a little reminder here on the screen, a little steering wheel that means, okay, NGP can be turned on. And all I have to do is very simple, just double press, and now NGP has taken over. It will automatically begin by going the speed limit, which is always a very good idea here in China because there are speed cameras everywhere and you really do not want to speed. Um, at this point, as I said, it's taken over. It will overtake other cars. Uh, it will in change lanes to do so, of course. Uh, and eventually when we get to the off ramp, either to get off of the highway completely or to change to another highway, it will control that entire process. All right, so you may have heard while I was talking, I'm getting some ping, ding. So let's talk a little bit about what this car does in order to, you know, what are the safety features? So there's, I would lump these semi-autonomous driving systems, the safety features into two main groups. The first is ones that use a camera to measure your eye line. And the other is ones that use either torque on the steering wheel or pressure on the steering wheel to make sure that you are, you know, at least engaged with the steering wheel at all times. There is a camera on this car here right above the steering wheel, but as of now on this version, uh, it does not use the steering wheel to measure eye line. Instead, about every 30 to 40 or 45 seconds, uh, it reminds you to apply a little bit of torque to the steering wheel. Um, I personally think that the best system is one that uses the camera, and I'm told that in future, uh, they will be activating that feature. And I think that a combination of the camera and using the torque of the steering wheel is probably gonna be the best one. It's simply the safest. I realize that a lot of drivers are gonna say, oh, that's a huge pain. Well, honestly, honestly I, it's got to be the safest possible option uh, that we have at least right now. NGP is built on the X-Pilot 3.0 Advanced Driver Assist System, which includes 12 ultrasonic wave sensors, five high-precision millimeter wave radars, 14 autonomous driving cameras, and one in-car camera with HD mapping and high-precision positioning. All that input requires a lot of computing power, so the P7 was the first production vehicle to take advantage of NVIDIA's Xavier computing platform. This is a car that many of our viewers were very curious about, and I have to admit that I was too. Having now driven it, I can say that it does not disappoint. It may not be the fastest or the most agile electric car, but it's quick, comfortable, and packed with tech. My first experience with NGP has left me very impressed, and I sincerely hope that we'll be able to do a more thorough comparison between it and Tesla's Autopilot, the version here in China. That'll have to wait for another day, unfortunately, because our video has come to an end. Thank you for watching. See you next time.